What to do if you miss the rapture believe that Jesus of Nazareth that came the first time is the Son of God, Israel's Messiah, be water baptized, and bless the believers in Israel, John 3, 16, 20, 31. Then read God's secret, this book, and the King James Bible. Before the rapture, believe the gospel of Christ is how that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4. After the rapture, believe the gospel of the kingdom is that Jesus is God's Son, the Messiah, Christ. For the body of Christ what Jesus did on Calvary was enough and are not to add our works to what he has done, Rom. 4, 5. He is the head of the body. When we believe we receive his imputed righteousness, 2 cor. 5, 21. But after the rapture, follow Peter's instruction in Acts 2, 38 to be water baptized just as the priests, x. 30, 20. And receive the Holy Ghost and help others to be saved. Know what mail, instructions, God is distributing for each particular time. The redeemed of the nation of Israel, God's people to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and save. The Gentiles on the earth after the rapture, are to be a kingdom of priests, a channel of blessing to preach to the Gentiles in the kingdom, Gen. 12, 1-4, ISA. 61, 6, Rev. 1, 6, 5, 10. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, x. 19, 5, 6. The Son of God will again help some through the fiery trial, 1 Peter 4, 12. We need the Spirit of God in us to understand His Word, 1 Cor. 2, 9-16. Then we can compare verses in the Bible with other verses. The Bible is to be declared. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, prov. 4, 7. Decide to believe. A man convinced against his will, is unconvinced still. The key verse in the Bible, the only verse in the Bible that tells us how to study the Bible, commands us study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim. 2, 15. Rightly dividing is dividing truth from truth. It is not dividing truth from error since there are no errors in the King James Bible. It is dividing the mystery Christ gave to Paul. Romans to Philemon, from the rest of the Bible. Hebrews summary God who spoke in time past has in these last days of Daniel's timeline of 490 years spoken to us by his Son, the heir of all things. He is the expressed image of the Father and after he purged our sins he sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. The Father said unto the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever. 1, 8. He is the Lord that made heaven and earth and he is getting ready to fold up heaven and earth like an old garment and replace them. Therefore, we should carefully listen to what the Lord and his followers said. He is better than the angels, but was made a little lower than the angels so he might through death destroy him that had the power over death, the devil. He is the apostle and high priest of our profession, being his priests. He is better than Moses. Harden not your hearts as the Hebrews did at Kadesh Barnea when the spies returned with a report about the promised land, and were not allowed to enter the land because of their unbelief. Fear, because this is your last chance of entering the kingdom. He has a better priesthood than the Levitical one given to Aaron. He is the eternal priest king after the order of Melchizedek, king of righteousness and king of Salem, which is, king of peace. After the law, the son, from the tribe of Judah, was made priest forever by an oath, PSA. 110, 4. The true tabernacle is in heaven. The earthly tabernacle and Levitical priesthood are a shadow of the real. 
He is the mediator of a better new covenant, N.C., established on better promises. The Son's sacrifice allowed for His Spirit to be in us. God said the new covenant is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and be their God, 8, 8-10. The old covenant, O.C., is ready to vanish, 8, 13. It could not give peace to the conscience, animal blood is inadequate. Until Christ came and offered his own blood and obtained eternal redemption and inheritance. Without blood there is no remission of sins. The O.C. only reminded us of our sinfulness. Christ was judged holy and fill appear a second time unto salvation for Israel. Christ came to take away the old covenant and establish the new. His blood sanctifies. He sat down to wait, expecting his enemies to be made his footstool, PSA. 110, 1. We will be sanctified by the implementation of the NC. Our high priest is also the sacrificed Lamb of God. He has made a new and living into the holiest of all to the Father in the heavenly tabernacle. Therefore, do not forget to assemble yourselves together and encourage one another in the little flock with these truths through the tribulation until he returns. Those who take the mark of the beast care more about food and trample under their feet the blood of new covenant the Son of God obtained. These will receive greater punishment than those who despised the law of Moses. But we are not of those that draw back into perdition, but of those that believe to the saving of the soul. The knowledge of the truth for Israel is that Jesus of Nazareth who came the first time is the Son of God, their King Priest. In Contrast, the knowledge of the truth for the body of Christ is the mystery. There will be vengeance and judgment against the unbelievers at his second coming. The just shall live by faith. Remember the persecution of the early church and the faith of the Old Testament saints who looked for the promised land and the city of the king. New Jerusalem from heaven. Moses gave up all he had in Egypt for the sake of the eternal inheritance. Look to Jesus who endured suffering for the joy of being in the kingdom with the saved set before him. The tribulation is chastening, endure it. Do not sell your eternal future for some food like Esau. You have not come to scary Mount Sinai, loving Mount Zion in heaven where the saved are. Jesus is speaking to you from heaven in this letter. He has promised to shake heaven and earth once more so the kingdom will remain and the rest be removed. The remnant in prophecy is the group that is going to be married to God, his bride. We are the remnant and we can count on his promises, so do no fear what man can do to you. Go outside the camp and meet in the wilderness for the present temporary Jerusalem and apostate priests are not for us. Jesus suffered outside the camp, city. Let us bear our reproach, and by him praise God continually, giving thanks to his name, Jesus. Do not forget to do good, share with others, obey your leaders. May the God of peace that raised Jesus, the Great Shepherd, make you perfect, working in you through these words. Pray for us. Kept secret since the world began and spoken. By all his holy prophets since the world began are two different things. After the rapture, believe Peter's gospel of the kingdom. Repent, change our minds, about who Jesus of Nazareth is. He is the king of the Jews to sit on David's throne in Jerusalem and be water baptized just as the priests were to be cleansed by water. There is no text on this page. Timeline How do we rightly divide the word of truth, to Tim? 2, 15. All 13 letters that begin with the name Paul, Romans to Philemon, are written to the group that will live eternal in the heavens, 2 cor. 5, 1, while all the rest of the letters are for the group that will in his kingdom on earth, Matt. 5, 5, f. 1, 9, 10. Bible laid out. We begin to have an idea of the big picture in the Bible when we recognize that the Bible begins with Heaven and Earth In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, Gen. 1, 1 And, ends with Heaven and Earth And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, 
for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, Rev. 21, 1. Before he made the world, wisdom was with God, prov. 8, 23 to 27, f. 1, 4. The Bible begins with the issue of the heaven and the earth, it ends with the issue of the heaven and the earth. So when you read your Bible you get the idea that what's going on in the heaven and the earth is something God is interested in. And by the way, heaven and earth, that is one of the most basic, a fundamental division, in God's word, Pastor Richard Jordan. God did not reveal that he was interested in reclaiming not only the earth, but also heaven until Acts 9 when the risen, resurrected, glorified Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Why did God keep his plan for heaven a secret? In his wisdom, God kept his plan for heaven a mystery. It was hidden wisdom, that God kept secret so that Satan and the fallen angels that followed him would not learn about it anywhere in the Bible until Christ revealed that information to Paul for the body of Christ, f. 3, 2. Because if Satan had known that he would lose heaven also he would not have crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 cor. 2, 6 to 8. Christ triumphed over sin, death, and the devil on the cross. The Son paid the price for all mankind's sins with his own blood. When the Son of God takes possession of heaven and earth he will rule them well with willing loyal loving subjects who all have his spirit in them. There will be righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, Rom. 14, 17. There is no text on this page. Why the King James Bible? The King James Bible states that the Lord Jesus Christ has two gospel messages in the Bible. One message through Peter and another message through Paul. Satan's counterfeit. Bibles say one message with two audiences. The King James Bible, KJB, translators were also right concerning Lucifer. The KJB says O Lucifer, son of the morning in Isaiah 14, 12, but many modern Bibles call Satan the name of Christ in that verse. The NIV says, O morning star in Isaiah 14, 12, morning star is a name for Christ in Revelation 22, 16. The New American Standard Bible also calls him the same divine title O star of the morning. The ESV says, O day star, son of dawn which is another title for Christ. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, 2 Peter 1, 19. The Amplified Bible says O light bringer and day star, son of the morning when Lucifer means light bearer it is Jesus Christ who is the light. The NKJV reads like the KJB but has a footnote saying literally day star, when son of the morning probably means he was created early in creation. Satan wants to be worshipped, so guess. Which Bibles are his counterfeits? That's right the modern Bibles. It is not enough to merely use the KJB, we must believe it and submit to it as our sole authority. In the tribulation, Satan will inspire men to change the Bible even more, that is why God makes a stark warning. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book, Rev. 22, 18, 19. Many will die because of their witness of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. John wrote, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, Rev. 20, 4b. There is no text on this page. Where does God divide the Bible? In order to understand the Bible, we are to apply rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim. 2, 15. 
Orthotomio, Greek for rightly dividing, means to cut straight. God divides between mystery and prophecy. Christ has two ministries, one, an earthly ministry through the twelve apostles of which Peter is the leader and, two, a heavenly ministry through his one apostle to the one body of Christ, Paul. Peter and Paul preached two separate gospels messages to two distinctly separate groups of people, Israel and the body of Christ. Where exactly does the mystery, the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace, begin and end? Paul said that he was the first sinner into the body of Christ, the leader, chief, of the sinners that would hereafter be saved into that group, 1 Tim. 1, 15, 16. That group began in Acts 9, Acts 9, 4 to 16, 22, 7 to 9, 26, 14 to 18, when Paul was saved. On the road to Damascus. The mystery will end with the catching up of the body of Christ, 1 Thess. 4, 15 to 17, 1 Cor. 15, 51 to 53. When the rapture happens the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, and with two trump of God or trumpet sounds, the dead and then the living in Christ will rise. Simultaneously the voice of the archangel, Michael, will notify Israel of our departure to heaven, are gathering together unto him, 2 Thess. 2, 1. When some of the Jews realize that God has kept his promise to the body of Christ they will believe that he will keep his promise to them and trust in Jesus their Messiah, 2 Thess. 1, 10. Paul said that the body of Christ will be raptured before the tribulation, room. 5, 9, 1 Thess. 1, 10, 5, 9. Paul said we would be raptured before Antichrist is revealed by being the one that signs a seven-year contract or covenant agreement with Israel, 2 Thess. 2, 8. The he who now letteth will let, restrain, delay, hinder, until he be taken out of the way, 2 Thess. 2, 7, is the body of Christ. The body of Christ is also known as the one new man, F. 2, 15, composed of believing individual Jews and Gentiles. And then after the rapture shall that wicked be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him at his second coming. He becomes that wicked when Satan enters him, then the man of sin becomes the man of perdition, 2 Thess. 2, 3. God will resume his program with the believing remnant of Israel where he left off in Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council. God put the little flock, Luke 12, 32, on hold, interrupted prophecy, and began the mystery. In, Hebrews to Revelation God is speaking to his people again, not to the body of Christ. The more sound doctrine we study and believe rightly divided in the King James Bible, the more equipped we are to function here and in eternity. We get into the book, so the book can get in us, 2 Tim. 3, 16. 17. There is no text on this page. There is no text on this page. Dispensation God dispenses certain instruction for salvation and service for a period of time to test if man will believe and obey him. Linked covenant A covenant is what God said he will do for a man or a group of men by himself and sometimes it is an agreement between God and man. 1. Innocence, Gen. 1. 28. Fruitful and multiply and have dominion. 1. Ednik, Gen. 2. 16. 17. Free will. Man not to disobey God's one rule. 2. Conscience, Gen. 3. 7. Moral responsibility to do right, not wrong. 2. Adamic, Gen. 3. 15. The seed of the woman to crush Satan's seed. 3. Human government, Gen. 9. 5. If a beast or a man kills a man, the man's or beast's blood, life, is required. 3. No heek, Gen. 9. 15. No more flood. 4. Promise, Gen. 12. 
1 to 3, Land, Nation, Bless them, Make a name of Abraham, And he will be a blessing. 4, Abrahamic, Gen. 12, 1 to 3, I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. Continues in Trib. 5, Law, X. 19, 5, 6, If you obey my law, then you will be a special people above all others all the earth is mine. 5, Mosaic, X. 19, 5, 6, Israel will be a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Continues in Trib. 6, Kingdom Regathering of the Jews. 6, Palestinian, Deuterium. 30, 3. 7, Messianic Church, Matt. 16, 16 to 18, Christ the Son of the Living God will be the rock the kingdom. Church is built on and the gates of hell will not keep him or his followers from resurrecting. 7, Davidic, 2 Sam. 7, 16, David's house and kingdom shall be established before David, in his sight, and his throne and his son's throne shall be established forever. Continues in Trib. 0, the dispensation of grace, the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ given to them from Christ through Apostle Paul. 0, no covenant, Rom. 9, 4, F. 2, 11, 12. But we are able ministers of the New Testament of His blood that saved us and gave us His Spirit, 2 Cor. 3, 6, 8, Kingdom, Rev. 20, 4, Continuation of the believers that began with Christ's earthly ministry and in Acts that will live and reign with Christ for a thousand years in the eternal kingdom. 8, New Covenant, J. 31, 31. 34, Isaac. 36, 24 to 28, Hebrew. 8, 8 to 12, God will enable Israel to keep his law by his spirit in them. He will put his law in Israel's mind, write it on their hearts, and sprinkle them clean with blood and water. All will know him. He will not remember their sins anymore. Asterisk, 9, the dispensation of the fullness of times. F. 1, 10. On the adjacent timeline the letters mean Redeemer, Deliverer, Avenger, King, and Blesser. There is no text on this page. Time periods in the Bible, using the order of the 66 books of the Bible, the main divisions in the Bible are between mystery and prophecy. Prophecy, Genesis to Acts 9, Mystery, Romans to Philemon, Prophecy, Hebrews to Revelation. Time past, prophecy, innocence, gen. 1 and 2. The fall of man, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah and the flood, the tower of Babel, Noah and the flood, failure at the tower of Babel, God made the nations, gen. 3 to gen. 11. Israel's history, the call of Abraham to the giving of the law, gen. 12. 1 to Exodus. C slash W Acts 7. Exodus to the death of Joshua, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. The Abrahamic Covenant, Old Covenant, and Palestinian Covenant under Moses. Judges from the death of Joshua until the choice of Saul, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel 1, 1 to 10, 24. Samuel was the last of the early prophets. Kings from Saul to the Captivities, 1 Samuel 10, 25-31, 13, 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. The glory of the kingdom under David and Solomon became a divided kingdom under Solomon's son, Rehoboam. The captivities, political fall, the root cause of the northern kingdom's Assyrian captivity, 722 BC, was the golden calf set up by Jeroboam. This captivity occurred in stages, the last siege of Samaria was when King Hosea reigned, 2 Kings 15, 
29, 17, 16, 17. The Southern Kingdom's Babylonian Captivity, 606 BC, began the fifth course of chastisement prophesied by Moses, Lef. 26, 27 to 39, known as the Times of the Gentiles, Luke 21, 24. The time of Gentiles will continue until Christ's second coming. Books were written during the exile, Esther, Ezekiel, Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon attacked Jerusalem while Jehoiakim was on the throne, 2 Kings 24, 1-9, which was approximately 606 BC. Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim's son, was ruling over Judah when Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem again, 2 Kings 24, 10-20, circa 597 BC. When Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem the third and final time, about 586 BC, Zedekiah was deposed. During those three sieges, Nebuchadnezzar removed from power three Jewish kings that were descendants of King David. Judah's political fall was gradual and spanned approximately 20 years. The return from captivity into the land of Israel by some, 70 years later. This covers a period of 40, 9 years in which the wall and the temple in Jerusalem are rebuilt, Dan. 9, 24-27. Daniel's timeline was in the first year of King Darius, Dan. 9, 1. Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The poetical and wisdom books are prophetic of the tribulation and the kingdom, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Son of Solomon. 400 Years of Silence, Amos 8, 11. The kingdom at hand because the king was here according to Daniel's timeline, Dan. 9, 24-27, was proclaimed by John the Baptist, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Twelve Apostle, and Christ's other followers. The king was rejected and crucified, the renewed offer of the kingdom was given in early Acts by Peter and the eleven and the other members of the little flock, Luke 12, 32. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. From Acts 1 to Acts 7 is about one year. Post, Resurrection Chapters, spoken by Christ during his forty days on earth, R. Matt. 28. Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20, Acts 1 The renewed offer of the kingdom the fall of the nation of Israel and the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Matt 12, 31, 32, Acts 7 Acts 2-7 Israel was given a renewed offer because they knew they crucified Jesus, but not that he was their Messiah, through ignorance yet did it, Acts 3 17. But now, Mystery, Acts 9, the call and commissioning of Saul of Tarsus to be Apostle Paul of the Gentiles, Rom. 11, 13, to build the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace to live in the heavenly places, 2 Cor. 5, 1, after they are raptured or caught up. To meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thess. 4, 17. Romans to Philemon Ages to come, Prophecy, Israel's Later History, The Seventieth Week of Daniel, Dan. 9, 27, also known as Jacob's Trouble, J. 37. The Tribulation will end at the Second Coming of Jesus Christ in power and glory to vanquish Antichrist and his armies at the Battle of Armageddon. Jesus will set up his kingdom and judge the nations, Matt. 25, 31 to 46, and the kingdom on earth believers will be resurrected. The believing remnant of the twelve tribes will again be above the other nations and rule with King Jesus under the leadership of King David and the twelve apostles, J. 39. Satan will be bound in the pit of hell until the end of the millennium. Satan will then be released and the rebels of the Gentile nations will encircle Jerusalem and they will be destroyed by fire from heaven. The great white throne judgment of the lost is next. Then the old heaven and earth will be destroyed by fervent heat. The dispensation of the fullness of times, F. 
1, 9, 10. In the day of God, the new heaven and the new earth will only have believers that have the righteousness of Christ and exist forever with God. Hebrews to Revelation Circumcision, above, underscore underscore, the law, uncircumcision, below, what is the middle wall of partition? The middle wall of partition is the fact that the circumcision, the nation of Israel, is preferred by God above all other nations the uncircumcision, the Gentile nations. The middle wall of partition is up and the law is in effect before and after the dispensation of grace. Gentiles need to bless Israel according to the Abrahamic covenant. This wall in which Israel is the preferred nation was also up since Abraham and also in Christ's earthly ministry. The middle wall of partition was only down during the dispensation of grace, f. 2, 11 to 18. In Hebrews through Revelation, the middle wall of partition is up. In the tribulation, the wall is up. In the kingdom, the Gentiles will serve the people of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles. Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers, they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me, isa. 49, 22, 23. You may want to look at these scriptures, Matt. 1, 21, 10, 5, 6, 15, 2. Who was Peter addressing on Pentecost and in early Acts? Yemen of Judea, Acts 2, 14, Yemen of Israel, Acts 2, 22, Yemen of Israel, Acts 3, 12. Peter's group was not speaking to the body of Christ, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only, Acts 11, 19. God sent Peter to Cornelius as an isolated incident in order to inform the leader of the twelve apostles, who informed the rest of the apostles in Acts chapter 11, that God had caused a dispensational change. In Acts 9, Peter would not understand this change until Paul explained it in Acts 15 and Galatians chapters 1 and 2. Please compare these verses carefully Acts 3, 21 and Romans 16, 25. Here is an easy way to recognize the difference between Peter and Paul. Peter spoke about those things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Acts 3, 21. But Paul spoke about the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, Rom. 16, 25. Do you notice the difference? Notice the two different Gospels. But contrarywise, when they saw that the Gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me Paul, as the Gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, lost Jews and Gentiles, and they unto the circumcision, Gal. 2, 7-9. The little flock stayed with the believing Jews and gave all the lost to Paul. Had Paul and Peter been preaching the same thing to the same group they would have united their ministries. God has two realms, heaven and earth. These verses clear up a lot of confusion in the Bible. The good thing about death and dying is that mankind can receive a glorified eternal body and Christ's perfect eternal spirit is in them by faith in what Christ has done. But the angels never die, Luke 20, 35, 36. Since the angels that sinned never die, they cannot be redeemed. God has no choice but to cast the angels that sinned into a separate place apart from the new heaven and new earth in which no sin will dwell called the lake of fire. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, 
prepared for the devil and his angels, Matt. 25, 41. Mankind was made a little lower than the angels, PSA. 8, 4, 5. For the purpose of redeeming mankind, Christ also took on our low form, John 1, 14, Phil. 2, 7. The very reason that Christ was made a little lower than the angels was so he could suffer death in man's place, 2 cor. 5, 21. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, Hebrew. 2, 9. Death is not, as commonly, thought the cessation of existence because man has an eternal soul and spirit, Gen. 35, 18, James 2, 26. Death is simply the departure of the soul and the spirit from the physical body. When the Father raised Christ from the dead, Gal. 1, 1, he rose in a glorified body, without the corrupt physical body, the Son of God was once again higher than the angels. The Lord is the captain of the host of the Lord, Joshua 5, 14. The host of the Lord are his armies of holy angels, Matt. 25, 31, 2 Thess. 1, 7. But after mankind has received their glorified bodies with Christ's spirit in them then they will be a little higher than the angels, 1 cor. 15, 42 to 44, Phil. 3, 20, 21. Our corrupt bodies are not suitable for eternal life in the heavenly places because the sinful flesh dwells in our dying and decaying bodies, Rom. 7, 20. 23. We can have victory over our sinful flesh if we walk in the truth of who God made us, as Christ through Paul reported in Romans to Philemon. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, Rom. 8, 3, 4. Jesus Christ kept the old covenant law perfectly. The old covenant was made forevermore, 2 Kings 17, 37. With Christ's Spirit in them under the new covenant they will be able to keep the old covenant. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption, 1 cor. 15, 50. At the judgment seat of Christ any remaining impurities in us will be burned off to avoid contaminating heaven, 1 cor. 3, 13 to 15. Believers will receive Christ's life, Gal. 2, 20, col. 1, 27, His Spirit. Paul said that the body of Christ will rule over the good angels in the heavenly places. Know ye not that we shall judge angels. 1 cor. 6, 3a. All the lost men and angels will be judged by Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment. Rev. 20, 10 to 15. But them that are without God judgeth. 1 cor. 5, 1 3 a. What does no condemnation mean for a member in the body of Christ? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Rom. 8, 1. There is no condemnation to us. When we received the gift of righteousness, Rom. 5, 17, by trusting the gospel, 1 cor. 15, 3, 4. We are dead to the law, Rom. 7, 4. A dead man cannot be tried in court and found guilty. We no longer follow the laws if, then principle. The law says if you obey I will bless you. If you disobey I will curse you. We could never keep the law because we inherited. Adam's sin nature. Christ kept the law perfectly for us. By his grace, God imputes to the believer in the body of Christ, 
the righteousness of his son Jesus Christ. Paul boiled the gospel of justification by faith down into one sentence. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Cor. 5, 21. If we have received the imputed righteousness of his Son, what else do we need to be accepted by the Father? The answer is nothing. Our standing is perfect. However, our state, behavior or conduct, needs to match our standing. Christ's perfection, his image, is what is the mark that we strive for. We should live every moment of every day remembering that by having his righteousness, we are complete and totally forgiven in Christ. In Christ, we have been made free from the law and having to perform to be accepted. We are already accepted in him, f. 1, 6. We are saved by faith, and we live by faith in Christ's teaching to us. In this dispensation of grace, the law is not in effect, grace is. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace, Rom. 6, 14. Grace is God doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves because of the sacrifice of Jesus. We are fallible imperfect humans. With his spirit in us and our minds being renewed daily, f. 4, 23, in his word rightly divided, 2 Tim. 2, 15, we can be transformed to be more and more like Christ, Rom. 12, 1, 2. We walk by faith, 2 Cor. 5, 7, in Christ's word to us through Paul, Romans to Philemon. This is the teaching that is to end about us. We learn about who God has made us and how we can do his will out of love and gratitude, 1 Tim. 2, 4. However, we also know that we reach full maturity as we study all the Bible considering what Christ said to Paul as separate from the rest of the Bible, 2 Tim. 2, 7. While Paul's letters are directly to and about the body of Christ, the rest of the Bible contains principles that we can learn from, even if not written directly to or about us. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works, 2 Tim. 3, 16, 17. Paul was the first member into the body of Christ and he is our pattern or example, 1 Tim. 1, 16. There is no text on this page. Last days the phrase last days appears eight times in the Bible. In all instances it refers to what will happen to the believing remnant of Israel in the last days before God sets up his kingdom and rules from earth according to Daniel's timeline, Dan. 2, 44, 9, 24 to 27. The exception is that Paul tells Timothy about the last days in the dispensation of grace, mystery, for the body of Christ. 1, and Jacob called unto his sons, and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days, Gen. 49, 1, 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it, Isa. 2, 2, 3, but in the last days it shall come to pass, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it, Mike. 4, 1. 4, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, Acts 2, 17. 5, this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, 2 Tim. 3, 1. 6, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, Hebrew. 1, 2.
7. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days, James 5, 3. 8. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, 2 Peter 3, 3. Fulfilled prophecy is proof that God is at work and that the Bible is the inspired word of God. The probability that so many predictions in scripture have come to pass in such specific detailed proofs that God who knows what will happen had it written and preserved by making multiple copies over time. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, 2 Peter 1, 21. Forward the goal of this commentary is to be a guidebook for getting through the tribulation. For the reader to have a strategic grasp of what God said in Hebrews with insight from the other Hebrew epistles. But this book is also for the body of Christ alive today. When we study Israel's program, and contrast it with our own, then we understand both much better. A solid understanding of the new covenant will also increase our understanding by his spirit in us. Understanding Hebrews will open up the rest of the prophetic scriptures to us. Hebrews is the advanced doctrine concerning Jesus Christ as the high priest of Israel's believing remnant. He is interceding and helping those believers endure during the tribulation so they can get through it and have eternal life in the kingdom when he returns. Paul explained the accomplishments of Christ on the cross in Romans which is the foundational doctrine for the body of Christ. Hebrews elaborates on what Christ accomplished on the cross as the foundational doctrine for Israel. Asterisk the first mention of Hebrew is Abram the Hebrew, Gen. 14, 13. God's word is amazing, God says so much in a few pages. Why study Hebrews if it is for the believing remnant of Israel and not to the body of Christ? All scripture is profitable, 2 Tim. 3, 16. We gain more insight into God's plan for his eternal twofold kingdom and what Christ accomplished by the shedding of his blood on the cross and resurrection. By one cross, he redeemed two groups of people and both groups need and receive his life, his spirit, by grace through faith. There are many parallels between the two groups. Hebrews elaborates on Christ's work and we learn more about the details of the cross and resurrection. Furthermore. There are principles that are trans, dispensational and apply to both groups. As we compare and contrast the teaching that belongs to Israel it helps us in the body of Christ to clearly understand our own doctrine better. For one thing, we will learn to be grateful that we do not have to go through the tribulation. What is the best way to study Hebrews? The best way to study Hebrews is with the timeline closed, as if there was no dispensation of grace because none of Paul's letters apply to them. Israel's history will be their future. Roadmap to guide them through the tribulation, James 5, 10. Their history will repeat itself in reference to Antichrist. The revelation Christ to them after he rose into Paul does seem to have influenced many of the Hebrew epistles. For example, in Hebrews we learn that Christ tasted death for every man, Hebrew. 2, 9. Peter and John's letters also demonstrate knowledge gained from Paul at the Jerusalem Council, Acts 15 slash Galatians 2. Hebrews concerns the world to come a phrase mentioned five times in the Bible, Matt. 12, 32, Mark 10, 30, Luke 18, 30, Hebrew. 2, 5, 6, 5. The world to come is the next dispensation. Paul said, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, 1 Cor. 12, 3, 4. We will notice that the writer was aware that God had postponed Israel's program and would resume it in the future. Paul mentioned the Israel of God, Gal. 6, 16, and explained that Israel has been partially blinded until the rapture. Then God will save all believing Israel at his second coming. Paul explained that the nation of Israel has been temporarily blinded and had fallen from her lofty place until after the rapture of the believing Gentiles, 
because God is not finished with Israel as stated in Romans chapters 9 to 11. The Hebrew epistles are the nine books Hebrews to Revelation. God will give the believers living after our rapture special enlightenment so they can understand those books. This commentary is for the body of Christ to understand Hebrews. By His grace and with His Spirit, we Bible believers can study and understand some of these fascinating books now. The pronouns we, us, and are is the human writer including himself in the letter to the believing remnant of Hebrews and not to the body of Christ which is not mentioned in this book. They are justified by faith that is demonstrated by works. Hebrews is a continuation of what the Lord Jesus and his followers began to do and to teach in the four Gospels and early Acts. Jesus Christ prepared his followers to go through the tribulation, also called Jacob's trouble, J. 30, 7. This trouble is part of Israel's fifth course of punishment for their idolatry and disobedience to God, as outlined in Leviticus chapter 26, 27 to 39. Jacob's trouble, J. 30, 7 is God's chastisement of Israel for her idolatry and has nothing to do with the body of Christ. The Lord told us through Paul that we would not go through it. We will be raptured even before the man of sin is revealed, Rom. 5, 9, 1 Thess. 1, 10, 5, 9, 2 Thess. 2, 8, 12. How is Antichrist revealed? The Bible is clear that Antichrist will be the one that signs the seven-year covenant agreement with Israel prophesied by Daniel. The one week in Daniel 9, 27 is the last seven years of Israel's 490 years of chastisement or punishment for disobedience and spiritual idolatry. The mystery of the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace who are to live in the heavenly places was inserted by God into the gap between the 69th and 70th week of Daniel's timeline of 490 years of punishment of Israel, Daniel 9, 24-27. Hebrews through Revelation are letters to believing Hebrews that look forward to Jesus Christ's revealing at his second coming, Hebrew 9, 28, 10, 37. God will give the Hebrew believers more understanding during the tribulation. Hebrews is a book God wrote to the Hebrew believers. This commentary is written to the body of Christ so we will understand that letter better and to guide our loved ones that are left behind at the rapture. Much of the Bible has to do with Israel navigating through the seven years of tribulation and into the kingdom. The meek, the believing remnant of Israel, will inherit the earth, PSA. 22, 26, 37, 11, Matt. 5, 5. Hebrews through Revelation is not written to us but is profitable for our learning, Rom. 15, 4, 2 Tim. 3, 16. As we learn more about Christ and his program for Israel and the other dwellers on earth, we will understand more about our own program. We are to put on the whole armor of God, F. 6, 11, 13, understand the whole Bible rightly divided, so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Introduction Hebrews is a foundational book of doctrine for the Hebrew tribulation saints. Hebrews is written to the Hebrews in the world to come, 2, 5, the kingdom on earth. They will be saved after the rapture of the body of Christ. Hebrews is an exhortation to go on to perfection and not to draw back unto perdition. It is written to the fellowship of the believing remnant to urge them to hold on to their faith in Jesus their Messiah while he is gone no matter what, so they may enter into his visible, physical, eternal kingdom on earth. The writer says that their hope of the kingdom on earth is certain. Hebrews explains why Christ suffered and died to take away the sins of Israel the first time he came. It is a transition book from the Old Covenant, Mount Sinai, to the New Covenant, Mount Zion. On Calvary, Christ fulfilled the purpose of the Old Testament law. The letter exhorts the believing Messianic Judaism believers to stay faithful through the tribulation and into the kingdom. It is a series of contrasts between the good things of Judaism, angels, Moses, the Aaronic priesthood, 
and the Old Covenant, and the better things in the Son of God, Christ's preeminence as the firstborn of the dead, his victory over sin and Satan and death, his priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek, and the New Covenant. The Hebrew epistles were written in the last days of Daniel's timeline of 490 years, the last seven years before the second coming of Jesus Christ, Hebrew. 1, 1, 2, James 5, 1 to 11, 1 Peter 1, 3 to 13, 1 John 2, 18, Jude 17, 18, Rev. 1, 1 to 3, 7 to 9. Hebrews is an exhortation, 13, 22, to hold fast, 3, 6, to their faith that Jesus is the Messiah and go on unto perfection, 6, 1. The gospel of the kingdom preached by Christ and accompanied by signs and wonders continues to be preached. When Christ was on earth, he taught as if there would be no interruption in the fulfillment of prophecy. Therefore, his instructions will again apply when prophecy resumes. Christ foretold and pre-authorized the Hebrew epistles. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come, John 16, 12, 13. Hebrews was written before A.D. 70 since the temple was still standing, Hebrew. 7, 8, 8, 4, 9, 11, 10, 11, 13, 10. Possibly from Italy around events in Acts 18 to 20, A.D. 54 to 58. The godly remnant of Israel are the Hebrews who will suffer during the tribulation while they look for Christ to come and establish his kingdom on earth. There is a difference in prophecy between individual and national salvation. The individual can be saved by believing the gospel of the circumcision, but their national salvation will be when Christ returns. The key words in Hebrews is better, 13 times, perfect and let us. The key verse or theme is let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach, Hebrew. 13, 13. The Hebrews must leave the apostate religion in Jerusalem and come to Christ who died on Calvary outside the city. Hebrews helps the believing remnant to go from the old way of offering the blood of bulls and goats under the old covenant to a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, Hebrew. 10, 20. It speaks of Jesus being the author of a new covenant, Hebrew. 8, 8. 13, 12, 24. The Hebrew priesthood has a new high priest and a better sacrifice. The hope of Hebrews is to enter in or be resurrected in the kingdom, his rest, on earth in a new body with Christ's spirit in them, Hebrew. 4, 1. Israel will again be the preferred nation over the Gentiles. Hebrews is a continuation of the ministry Christ began through the little flock while he lived here below on earth. It is what their high priest spoke to them from heaven, Hebrew. 12, 25, after he sent the Holy Ghost to empower them. Peter explained the coming down of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost to Israel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Shall prophesy. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come his second coming to judge, x. 34, 22, PSA. 68, 1, 2, PROV. 1, 23, ISA. 3, 13, 13, 9, 59, 18, J. 46, 10. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, Acts 2, 16-21. When Antichrist comes on the scene and claims to be Christ it will be important to know that the name of the real Christ was Jesus of Nazareth. Hebrews is a warning to the followers of Christ, Messianic Judaism, not to fall back into Judaism. After the rapture, 
God will essentially pick up and resume prophecy where he left off with the believing remnant when he put them on hold, Acts 15. For the Gentiles, it will not be a matter of blessing all Jews, but only those who believe that Jesus who came the first time is their Messiah and King. Please be sure to see the Israel's five courses of chastisement for Israel in the appendix. Who wrote Hebrews? We do not know because God did not tell us. If God had wanted us to know who it was he would have told us. We can only speculate, and I will in chapter 13. Many people believe Paul wrote it. God the Holy Spirit wrote it, 3, 7. There are several reasons why Paul did not write Hebrews. 8 reasons why Paul did not write Hebrews, 1, Hebrews has major doctrinal differences. Paul preached grace, not the law. The Hebrew believers could lose their salvation, Hebrew. 10, 26-29, but the body of Christ believers have eternal security at salvation, Rom. 8, 31-39. 2, Paul expected to be raptured not to enter into the earthly kingdom. Hebrews is about enduring to the end of the tribulation and entering the kingdom on earth. It is not about the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and be escorted to heaven. 3. Paul would be under his own curse accursed for preaching another gospel, keeping the law and the gospel of the kingdom, instead of the gospel of justification by faith in Christ's work on Calvary, Gal. 1, 6-9, 2, 16, 4. The writer is someone who heard those who were followers of Christ in his earthly ministry on or after Pentecost, Hebrew. 2, 3, 4. Paul was not saved in early Acts around Pentecost, he was saved in Acts 9. 5. The writer identifies himself as being in the same group and in a similar situation as the Hebrews, not in the body of Christ, Hebrew. 10, 23, 2 cor. 5, 10. 6, Hebrews is about the last days, Hebrew. 1, 2, in prophecy, Paul spoke of the last days, 2 Tim. 3, 1, in mystery. 7, all 13 of Paul's letters begin with the token of his name, which Paul decided to use as an identifying mark after a letter was forged in. His name, 2 Thess. 2, 2. 3, 17. The first word in Hebrews is God, not Paul. 8. The writer does not claim to have any gifts of the Holy Ghost, but Paul did during the early part of his ministry, 2 cor. 12, 12. A wrong premise leads to a wrong conclusion. Believing that Paul wrote Hebrews will affect people's understanding not only of Hebrews but of the Bible because that person will not rightly divide between mystery and prophecy. We must consider what Paul said, 2 Tim. 2, 7, in his letters, Romans to Philemon, to the people that will live eternal in heavens, 2 cor. 5, 1. The mystery in Paul's epistles are separate from the letters to those who will live on earth. The books of the Bible follow a divine order. Acts is a transition book. Although Paul did not write Hebrews, the influence of what he taught seems to be in the letter. Many little flock candidates have been suggested. At the end of chapter 13, three possible candidates are examined. Hebrews outline chapters 1 to 6 the person of Jesus Christ. Chapters 7 to 10 his work as their high priest and the sacrifice of himself. Chapters 11 to 13 Application of the Doctrine, A Life of Faith A Series of Reasons Why the Ministry of Jesus Christ is Better and Warnings I. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is better than all others, 1 to 6, A. Better than the angels, 1, 2, Warning Do not be his enemies and perish with the earth, 1, 13, Warning Take heed to his words. How shall we escape? 2, 1 to 4, b. Better than Moses, 3, 4, warning unbelief kept Hebrews from entering the land, 3, 7 to 4, 13, warning harden not your hearts, 
as in the provocation, 3, 8, 15. Warning Take heed to not depart from living God in unbelief, 3, 12, c. Better than Joshua, 4, 1 to 13, warning let us fear so we do not come short of his rest, 4, 1, 7, d. Better than Aaron, 5, 6, warning go from milk of the word to solid food warning that they are dull of hearing, 5, 11 to 6, 20, warning not to fall away after believing the truth too. Better priesthood, after the order of Melchizedek, 7 to 10, a. Better priesthood, Melchizedek, not Aaron, 7, b. Better covenant, new, not old, 8, c. Better sacrifice, God's son, not animals, 9, d. Better sanctuary, heavenly, not earthly, 10. Warning if you sin willfully you will not enter his rest, 10, 26 to 39, 3. Better principle, faith, 11 to 13, a. Kingdom saints with faith that looked for a better country, 11, b. The example of endurance of faith, 12. Warning Esau sold his birthright for one morsel of food, 12. 16, 17, warning God is a consuming fire, and instructions, 12, 25 to 29, c. The evidence of faith, 13. The Hebrew epistles, these epistles, Hebrews to Revelation, were written after Pentecost in Acts 2, and God's extension of mercy allowed those letters to be written. The three transition books in the Bible are Matthew, the Old Testament prophecies being fulfilled, Acts, from Christ's ministry to Israel through Peter to Christ's ministry to the body of Christ through Paul, and Hebrews, from Moses the mediator of the Old Covenant to Jesus the Son of God being the mediator of a new covenant, as the high priest of the kingdom priests. Hebrews equals doctrine. The new covenant made through the blood of Christ is superior to the old covenant. James equals reproof, behavior for not proving their faith by works. 1 Peter equals correction, thinking, their suffering must precede glory. 2 Peter equals doctrine. How the godly remnant of Israel can make their calling and election sure. 1, 2, and 3 John equals reproof. Tests to distinguish the children of God from the children of the devil. Jude equals correction. Exposing the apostate false prophets. Revelation is doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Dispensational Bible study helps us to know when events take place by putting them on the timeline embedded in the Bible which corresponds to the order God has put the books of the Bible in. It will greatly help us to understand the Bible if we believe that when the Bible says Israel, it literally means Israel. Hebrews helps us to leave the milk of the word and move forward to the meat. The Purpose of Hebrews 1. To confirm that the Son of God has preeminence and is superior or better than the angels and Moses. 2. To show the Hebrew remnant of Messianic believers that the Old Testament had come to an end through the fulfillment of Christ of the purpose of the law on the cross. 3. To warn the godly remnant against falling back into Judaism or pausing short of enduring to the end and be disqualified to enter into the kingdom on earth. 4 to validate the fact that their high priest and his sacrifice of himself made him the mediator of a new covenant by his blood that speaks of better promises than the old covenant. 5. To encourage them to have faith to enter the kingdom of God and eventually be in the new Jerusalem. 6. To be assured of God's care for them and the care of each other during the tribulation. 7. To be certain of Christ's second coming, he has not changed his mind. Chapter Review Sentences 1 The Son of God is better than the angels and the old heaven and old earth will perish. 2. Jesus became lower than the angels, a Hebrew man, so he by death could save them from Satan and sin and be their high priest. 3. R. Israel's, high priest, the Son, is better than his servant Moses. Harden not your heart like in the day of provocation. 4. David spoke to us who are about to go through the tribulation in Psalm 95, 
saying do not be in unbelief and make sure you get into his rest. 5. Christ's eternal priesthood after Melchizedek is better than Aaron's. Warning that they are dull of hearing and need advanced understanding. 6. Go on from the basic doctrines of Christ, to learn what he did after the cross. Warning not to fall away because they cannot be renewed to salvation. 7. Christ has a better priesthood after Melchizedek, not Aaron. 8. Christ was the mediator of a better new covenant, not the old. 9. The Son is the mediator of a New Testament by his blood for sins. He sprinkled his blood in heaven as their high priest. 10. Warning to the Hebrews not to sin willfully after they understand who Jesus their high priest is and his sacrifice for them. 11. Let what other kingdom saints have done in the past instruct you in how to get through the tribulation. 12. Endure chastening looking unto Jesus, do not turn away from him which is speaking to you or despise your birthright in the kingdom like Esau. 13. Let us go forth to Jesus without the camp, bearing his reproach.